this is this is this is <laughs> hey what's up <laughs> how you doing man i'm feeling good you caught us in the van oh. we're headed to pensacola pensacola florida that's right excellent you're not driving are you they don't let me drive no. <laughs> where are you driving from last night was new orleans man city of the dead it was fucking cray cray wow I haven't been to New Orleans in a while. I haven't been there since since the world ended. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it definitely seems like the end of the world over there. Always, you know. Yeah. What was the? Where'd you guys play at? What was the venue? It was called the Goat, a the, really tiny little place, you know, no stage to speak of. It kind of, you know, people looking at you from the side and the front, you know. It was fun, and then afterward, uh, this guy had jerk chicken outside. So, I'm all, I, I can always go for a little jerk chicken. Mike, oh yeah, as you know. oh yeah. Ve- or New Orleans is a wild place because like the laws don't really apply, like no. the normal like, U.S. laws don't really. Yeah, I mean it's like dope, dope city out there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So heading, you guys are on the, in the south, doing your thing. Dirty South. We're, we're on tour with the Riverboat Gamblers. Oh, yeah. Those guys are rad. Tell them I said yeah, what's man, up. I guess it's 20 years of that first record of theirs, and so they're, uh, or their first big record. And so they're uh, out there pushing it. But we've been having fun, you know. Good. Good. Where's, uh, I mean, this, this is coming out Monday, so what is it? Uh, December 11th, so a couple days from now. But um, are you going to be on tour till when? Uh, it ends up in Nashville on the 9th, uh, where we're doing that punk rock flea market thing. Okay. Um, and, uh, they're paying us entirely too much money to play for some record collector like people. So we got this new record out, the concept album. So kind of ties in with it all. Yeah, dude. I, I, I had a couple of days with the record. I got to listen to a little bit and, I really dig it. I really feel like it's kind of like the best of what you do packed into this record. Why is it called the concept record or album? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> we like to have things where it's like the dwarves something. Like it's mm-hmm. a whole sentence. Like the dwarves are born again or the dwarves must die. And uh, this one, uh, it was actually Ron Martinez from the... Uh, uh, from you know the lower class brats you know and he he said what about the dwarves obligatory concept album so i just got <laughs> obligatory and, and there it was you know yeah yeah concept album but it's kind of weird it's like it's it's like less sergeant peppers and more like the white album kind of deal you know it's just every kind of style on there and it it's a little too long for us so it's kind of cool you know um yeah and, and there's but it, everybody's dripping on this one. Like everybody's uh, seems pretty happy with it. And it kind of reminds me of Must Die. It's like a lot of different styles and and uh, all kinds of songwriters on there. Of course, the legendary Nick Oliveri he wrote a bunch of shit. It's we got bit. our new drummer Snoop Hawk, rock legends back there. Fresh yeah. Prince of Darkness. He did a bunch of shit in there. So right on. Yeah. We're, uh, um, you know, we're just out here flogging the record, man. You know, fuck it. Hell yeah. I mean, one thing I noticed about the record is it feels good. Like, as a musician listening back to it, like, all the songs, like, that, I'm just thinking, that must be fucked up to play. But it sounds smooth. Like, I was like, okay, they got some good musicians on this shit. But, uh... I, I, don't, know, I don't know where you want to go, like, talking about this record, but... Um, I think some of the songs just crack me up, dude. Like, there's just classic dwarves material in there. Um, I mean, we could go, we can go into a couple songs. I mean, starting out, it kind of starts out with you know the intro blast on, but then feeling great, the first actual song, um, it yeah, makes you just one, feel good. Yeah, I mean, that one was kind of like, <laughs> well, I talked to you when I made that solo record, Ralph Champagne. Yep, and that. <laughs> to me kind of felt like a ralph champagne song yep but then when it got to the to the to the hook of something to fuck and something to eat i was like this could be dwarves you know so then it was kind of like that's about as pop as the dwarves go you know so 
open with that. We'll really shit on them with the next one, you know, which was like, I, I think the next track on there is called Voodoo. Voodoo. And it's very kind of hardcore. It was that, that was an instrumental that Josh Freeze came up with. And now, of course, he's in the Foo Fighters and everything, so everyone's tripping on him. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and then it kind of goes into a block of more kind of punk rock stuff. So, like, songs like Terrorist. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting for them to ban us from Southwest Airlines for that one. Yeah, know? that one was, it, it's pushing the envelope a little bit. But you have to, you know, it's dwarves. But I, I really love that song. Like that, All those, they hit hard. Like, feeling great, you're kind of like, okay, cool. But then you get knocked on your ass when it comes to voodoo. Uh, it's a punk song. It's fast. Uh, I love the the lyrics. Uh, you know, never built, they never built a bridge that I couldn't burn. Like, the, like it just hits you, you know, it's cool. Uh, and then Terrace, like you're saying. Fresh, fresh darkness came up with that and it was great because we had the instrumental you know it was like the only music that that josh did on the on the record we had the instrumental and i kind of tried to write over it and, and i couldn't get anything good you know and i was like fuck and then fresh prince came in and he goes well i just thought what would lemmy do and you listen to that thing and it's like i never built a bridge you know yes like, great it sounds very lemmy so, yeah um that that was that was his take on it and and uh, you know that's kind of the thing man when you got a bunch of people that can play and and write i think you come up with more interesting records than when it's just like most punk fans it's just like the one guy and so you kind of get whatever his style is you know but like even with this one you know we finally got snoopock in in here and he's like comes from a thrash band get a grip and so, you know, there's like thrash elements in there, you know what I mean? And different, you know, which the tours don't always do, you know? So there's all these, there's just kind of all these different stylistic places that we go, you know, just because of the people that are playing. And you know, my job is to kind of tie it all together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not an easy task, especially with that many songs and how they sound great. I, I want to keep going on, on Terrace because like I was listening to it, I'm like, terrorist what is this about <laughs> and then and then he says terrorist for your love and i'm like oh i okay okay but you're still yeah, got those when he wrote it it kind of leaned heavily on the terrorist shit yeah and then i kind of put in all the love stuff in between because i thought that was kind of the funny part it is it gives you a way out too like you're like you're using the terrorist thing as an analogy to how you feel about somebody like that's how fucking crazy i am about you <laughs> right, right exactly <laughs> i love it it's got that dash like the intro has a dash of of motorhead but then it's positively dwarves for for the rest of the song and uh yeah. i love it i, I think We're it's going great through a tunnel now sounds weird i don't know if you got it if you got the sound effects in here we got but that in there yeah out of it in a second yeah and hopefully you don't cut out too much it's, it's one of the best tracks on there we did a little video for it and uh you know there there was uh yeah everybody really likes likes that one you know and then then the record kind of skews garage for a minute it goes to that like dead to me and that that mm. was interesting because that that was more like that old trick where we'll like sample an old 60s garage record that nobody's heard you know and it's kind of like a song that you put together hip-hop style like as though you were doing a james brown riff or a parliament riff but instead you use like a weird old bit that's uh do it do it all the time track seven well no that it, um it was uh uh um which one you talk to me Dead to, then, oh, dead then, to me. Sorry, sorry. Dead to me. Got you. Then after Track six. Dead, and, and dead to me is like a duet with this good young singer that's coming up. Her name is uh, Mad Lucas, and she sings in a band called the Six Six Six. And so you know, we got her on there, and then like you're thinking, okay, this was kind of punk rock, and then it goes garage, and then all of a sudden we skew real different, and we do that do it all the time, you know, which Dirty Donnie made a video for. And then that one is like down tuned and really sludgy and kind of metal, you know, and it's kind of that new form of metal and it's about getting high. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, that's when you kind of know, okay, this is a weird record. This yeah. is like a white album kind of record, you know, that, that just sort of goes everywhere, you know. It takes you on a journey. And I think it kind of needs to, to keep for that many songs. I don't know. I can't remember how many songs are on the record, but it's, it's over 50. Songs. Yeah, it's like 20. 
So you got to take the audience somewhere. You got to take the listener on a journey. I really dug Mad Lucas, you know, having her come out on that song because it really fits in really well. Like I, I was like, wow, that like. I wonder if she's in the band or, or what, but like that's great. You, you guys did a great job with that mix too. Yeah, and people don't expect us to kind of soften it up like that and have female vocals. And there's always been this kind of misogynist edge to the band that you know I sort of looked at it more like misanthropist, like we hate everybody. But I think to a lot of people listening to it, it was like, wow, you hate women, you know. So when you when you bring in female vocals, you kind of neutralize that. And we really went for that with kind of the single, which is later on, like like middle of side two, we go for that track, uh, We Will Dare. And that was the one where we made the big like Barbie parody video and we did all that. And that, that really features Mad. She like sings lead in that. And so she really gets a chance to shine. And that was the kind of, that was the real kind of MXPXE, like let's do like a 90s revival kind of jam. Right. You know what I mean? Because it was like, we got to the end of the record we recorded a bunch of shit and it was like, you know, the only thing we don't have is one of those like nineties pop punk jams. And everybody seems to like that style now. And so that turned into the single, you know, it was kind of, and, and it kind of just the thing that really brought it home was the hook where it's like, don't let them cancel our love. So it's kind of talking about the new cancellation shit where everybody gets canceled and the yeah. more of them canceled for 40 years, you know? So the whole thing kind of goes full circle, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, that's great. I love that you comment on that a little bit and kind of use that. I love the tongue and cheekiness that the dwarves always bring to any subject. And maybe that's how you get through. Like, I was going to ask, you know, some sort of question about like you guys pushing boundaries and how you, how you sort of like balance creative and your art with being in the music business, you know, and the fact that there's expectations and there's industry, you know, norms and all that. Like, is that a thing? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, and it gets weirder and weirder, right? Because the older you get now, mm -hmm. the more it's kind of freighted with, like, you're a weird old white man talking about sex, you know? But it's okay so, if you're young. <laughs> yeah. Like, everything's so freighted with meaning now, you know? Like, mm -hmm. and, and, and that just gives you an opportunity to kind of tweak it further. And if you can find a clever way to do it and find a clever way in, like when we went to make the video about Don't Cancel Our Love, you know, the We Will Dare one, I thought, OK, if I actually sing this with Mad, it's going to look creepy because she's like 20 years old and super hot. You know, she looks like right. Gwen Stefani or whatever. And then I'm, you know, a, 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 a decrepit old dude, you know, so instead, like I played her dad in the, in the video. Oh, my <laughs> God. Okay, you know, and, then we, and then we brought in like Aaron from from Jackass to be the love interest guy. So then it was just real goofy. He had the he who cannot be named mask on, and so there was kind of a love interest, but it was weird and dwarves and you know. I mean, we kind of get to ignore the music industry because they always ignored us. Mm -hmm. You know, like they don't really give us anything, so we don't really have to apologize a lot or, or, or scale shit back you know we just kind of do it for our own amusement and then we figure out what's a funny way into this that's not so predictable you yeah know? i mean i i'm i'm not surprised because i know you personally you know and you're a nice person but like people are probably like oh they put thought into that and they actually chose not to be offensive when they could have just like fuck everyone i'm I'm the love interest. It's a, it's a video, whatever. But like you put thought into like, let's actually make this like, you know, <laughs> I don't know what, what the word is, but acceptable. Yeah, totally. yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I think most bands just start to phone it in pretty early, right? Like they're, they're really doing shit and thinking about it till they hit about 30. Yeah. And then it's just like, you know, nobody's thinking anymore or trying to do anything interesting. You know what I mean? They're just kind of like, well, this is what we do, and people listen to it. Yep. And, and with this band, like I say, it's because these guys keep me on my toes, man, because they all write songs, you know? And so it's like you're always getting some new shit in there where you're going, hmm, okay, what, what do I do with this? You know, what am I, 
what am I supposed to do? You know, like, I mean, it, it's, uh, so I think that's kind of the secret, you know, if you, it sounds corny, but if you can actually be an artist and keep trying to grow and make interesting shit. And I think the other thing is that like, usually when punk bands grow and do interesting shit, it just means they're going like goo goo dolls or whatever. Like how much softer can we get before we get a big hit? You know? Yeah. And with the doors, it was like, we would sort of do both. Like we would get poppier, but then we would also get weirder. And then we would also get dirtier, you know, all yeah. on the same record. So it was like, well, what the fuck is going on here? Like, why, why, why do they have this really nasty hardcore song? And then this weird noise thing. And then all of a sudden it's all sweet pop, you know? And, it, and what's funny is <laughs> It never makes us more popular. It just makes more people hate us. Because the people who like one song really hate the other one. Of course. <laughs> you can't please you can't please everybody, that's for sure. I mean I mean, as an artist you know that, but we try. I mean are you do you feel like you're a people pleaser or are you a I don't care what I don't listen to what fans say, I don't listen to what anybody says. Where are you on that spectrum? Because it's not usually black and white. That's a great question. I mean, I think again, it's like I'm both and we're both, you know, on the one hand, we're like, fuck you. You know, you never gave us a career anyway. You never played us on the radio. So we just suck my dick. Fuck you. We're going to do whatever we want. Then on the other hand, it's like as an artist, that's kind of a cop out. Right. Because then that gives you the excuse to kind of just sit there and do the same thing. Over and over. Excuses. So I'm like, yeah. What if I made a song that deserves to be on the radio? They just won't put it there. You know, or like, what if I make a song that's actually, I'm feeling great, like, you, which you're not expecting, you know, because it's supposed to be like so tortured and everything sucks, you know? I mean, it's kind of that, that to me is like the art, right? Like, can you, can you like fulfill all these different things? Yeah. You know? I think a lot, a lot of it. Oh, go ahead. Well, it's just a great question. It's like, I want to please people, you know, mm. but I also don't want to be told what to do. Right. You know, it's like, if you have, and you're cool, then you're going to be pleased. You know, if you're, you know, if you, if you've got these little rules about what you can listen to, then you're going to hate a bunch of it, you know, and then, you know. Absolutely. It's weird because the audience nowadays with the internet knows so much more than, we knew 20 years ago, you know, just, just, you know, you can Google something, you can, you can ask somebody, you know, it's, it's just a different world we live in. And it just feels, it feels like artists are, are very slow to adapt to that, to adapt to the fact that, oh, people know a lot more about what's going on. And, and, and sure, there's an audience of like, Nickelback fans, even though I know everybody loves Nickelback uh, <laughs> these days. Uh, but there's like people like that just like listen to like hard rock music and, you know, and go and drink their beer on the weekends, like and do their job. Like those are like good old Americans, right? Like nothing wrong with those people as long, you know, just stick to yourself, whatever. Um, I guess what I'm saying is most people these days with the with with the Internet, they just they had they just know so much more. And so, like, it's even, it's kind of just weird being an artist as long as you've been playing, as, as long as I've been doing it, and still still have a, I don't know, a weird antiquated idea of what the public is. And I'm sure it's nothing like what we think. Because, you know, you, when you meet well, somebody face-to-face, yeah. -face, it's always fine. It's usually fine. Especially because, like, I'm incompetent with, like, the internet and, like, knowing that stuff. And I and it's, it's weird because, again, it's this combination of, like, how much is it that you're just sort of old and out of touch and you don't get it? And how much is it that you're saying, no, fuck you. I don't like this new bullshit way of looking at things. Right. Like, I don't want, I don't want to look at it that way, so I'm not going to, you know. It's like, you, you, you know, I think that's part of what people appreciate about this band. I mean, that's the comment I get more than anything is just people kind of going, thank you, you know, for being real. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. what does that mean? Everybody's real, you know, well, but, you, but I know what they mean. Yeah. You know, because it, it's like the Internet allows you. I mean, I think the other thing is that, like, bands talk about marketing so much more 
and they and they and like all the advice that they hear is about marketing and i'm like so you like bands need some advice about like how to write a hook yes <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to construct a song or how to get a good drum part it, it like and but instead it's like do you know that if you hashtag everything this way you're gonna get way more likes you know and it's just like whoa dude like I don't know about that and maybe I should because I could get richer and I want to get richer, you know, but it's like I, I want a song, you know, like yeah. that's that's what I think about. So it's like and what the challenge of the internet is like, how much can you not think about what they're trying to make you think about? How much can you avoid their algorithm and, and just play it for what it's worth, you know? That's a good fun game to play is like watch your algorithm, like click on all the dogs, click on, you know, like just make weird stuff come up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So I, I hear what you're saying about marketing. It is exhausting. It's exhausting for me being in the game, you know, constantly, you know, you got to make this video or whatever. Um, I feel like, I feel like it's, um, it's just something that it's different for everybody, but, when it comes to being an artist, focusing on the art is obviously number one. And I get bogged down with been setting up live stream stuff and I'm, you know, doing all this and something's not working. So like technical, all this, all that, it really gets to you after a while. And so every now and again, you just have to like pull back and just go, let's go back to the basics and let's just do maybe, maybe back to the basics now is like, you know, technology wise is still an iPhone and a guitar and like, that's it, you know, like something like that. Not all the extra equipment and cameras and cabling and, you know, you can do that. Um, I don't know what the equivalent, I guess it would be going to an in-store back in the day. You know, we used to do those all the time. That was something we did with this record in terms of like, you know, every Dwarfs record originates with just a session in the studio and we, we went in for two days and we got 12 songs a day and like nobody could believe it. Like the guy that runs the studio couldn't believe it. And the chick that was taking photos couldn't believe it. Cause people are like in there arguing and being weird and getting bogged down. We're just like, Oh fuck three takes, you know, that's fine. Yeah. You know, you need another one. It's like, no, cause we're good. Yeah. We don't need another take. We got this shit. And you know, I, 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 we went in with a couple songs already and so it was like you know we turned around after two days and it's like we got a fucking record here you know so that's kind of the rock and roll inspired part of it and then I sit there and start finger fucking it for a year you know doing of course it. but you know it's like that if you have to capture those moments if it's a rock and roll band yeah. it's gotta be that moment when it was action and it was all you guys and you were in the place you know, um, and like I say, man, I mean, it's just a big part of it is these guys make me look good because they play good and they write good and they even know how to write so that it seems like I wrote it. So everybody assumes that it was me. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like every, it, it's like they, it, it, it's a cool group to be in, you know? I mean, and it's very, you know, man. And you get old and sentimental, and it's just like, I'm just happy about that. Yeah. You know, I look at bands, even like Hall and Oates today, right? They're having a big fight. You know, it's like, yeah, they guys, are. you guys, you gotta have a fight, you know? What, I mean, it's like. What's the dispute about with them? Do you even know? Yeah, it's like, if you could try and enjoy yourself and have fun, that's really the biggest laugh you can have on the music industry. You of know, course. if you really want to get a laugh on them, stay around a long time and enjoy yourself. And that's, that's the best thing you can do because they're all having an ulcer over trying to market their shit, you know. And it, and it's just, I don't know, man. I, I look back on these memories of, like, you know, being at a label and then watching, you know, whatever, Green Day sell 10 million records or, you know, before that it was being at, you know, Sub Pop and watching Nirvana move 10 million records. It's you're just so jealous and pissed off. It's like, why is nobody listening to me? And why, you know what I mean? And then once you just let all that go and you're just making music again, it's like being a, it's like being in high school again. You know, you just do it because you enjoy it. And I think people pick up on that, you know, I mean, the starving part isn't great, 
you know, but that's why you, that's why you got to kind of do your business right. I mean, yeah, I went back and got all my old records and, you know, it's just like, if, if, if you, you got to kind of know what you're doing with that, but yeah. that's kind of different than marketing, you know, cause again, for me, it was just like, well, I don't want these assholes to own my record and keep it out of print, which is what so many of the labels are doing. You know, they have, they have an old band's shit. And they just leave it out of print because they don't care. Right. And they don't think they're making it. I was like, fuck you, you know. So all the Doors records are in print. You go see this band, you'll hear shit from the 80s and the 90s and every record right there with brand new shit. That's fun, you know. And, and I got guys like you talking about the record saying, this is great and it's new and it's cool, you know. And, and so... I don't know, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling great. Yeah. No, I, I think that's the best place to be. You know, you're talking about people like you because you're real. They like the dwarves because it's real. And that's one of the things I, I really latched onto when I f started listening to the record is just like, it's just another banger of a recording. Like the, the, the record sounds real. No, I don't care how you got it, you know, on tape or whatever on, on digital. Uh, it sounds great. It sounds like what I like personally is like, I like to say, you know, okay, that sounds like they actually played it. It sounds, but it sounds, you know, it sounds probably better than, you know, if they played it, you know, on, on a stage or whatever necessarily, but like, cause you're like, you know, redoing some overdubs here and there. But like, what I'm saying is it's just, it sounded just true to what a rock punk rock band should sound like to me in my ears. And not to say, I mean, not to say it has to sound like there's other bands that sound great, but I just love the sound of this record. Like, continues to wow, be just every song like if it's a punk song it's mixed right if it's a like a pop pop punk song or something like you got you know the the 60s kind of stuff you do uh there's some like 80s new wave vibes in there like in the punk you know rock set i got that vibe like i like it you know it's yeah. just like everything sounds like it should in there which is i think i gotta give props to andy carpenter yeah he's like my secret weapon because he's so good and he can play every instrument and he's just one of those guys with like perfect pitch and and you know like in vocals and shit you know so or, and so or a lot of them you know so it's like it, yeah when you got a good guy in the studio that mm -hmm. really helps because i was never a studio guy uh and and so you know but i got spoiled back in the 90s with eric valentine turns out to be like a platinum producer and was a friend of mine and so he like taught me about production and then when i found andy it was like fuck this is like another eric oh great so that's been part of it too like <laughs> like some guys from punk bands like you know they'll only work with somebody that like with the right tattoos or who's supposed to be cool or something it's like i don't want anybody cool i don't need a tattoo i want you to be a fucking boffin that's all about hi-hat sounds and fucking guitar amps and bullshit that i don't know about you know what i mean like that's if, if, if you can plug other people in you, you get some amazing shit you know and, and especially if they respect what you're doing like i like pop guys because they know how to mix mm -hmm. you know and then you can tell them well crank, crank up the guitar a little more and it's like fine and but your shit sounds smooth you know what i mean where whereas like a lot of the punk guys, they do these fucking half-ass recordings, and to get it as hard as a punk song has to be, they got to drown out the drums with the guitar, you know, or, 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 or whatever. It's like, I, you know, I want, like, hype sounds mm -hmm. so that when you go to mix it, it can sound really overdriven and heavy, but yet you're still getting and vocals, you know, and all those tricks of, like, you know, I, I, I'll put guitar effects on a vocal so I don't have to crank the guitar as much. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. There, there's, there's shit that you figure out after a while and that other people have shown me that I, I never would have, that never would have occurred to me, you know? Yeah. So, like, my, my, my experience with, like, punk rock engineers was just, like, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't want it. Yeah, I always love working with new people because you always learn a new something whatever it is if you're working on a record for me you know the vocal process is is really all i 
care about, you know, cause I'm just like, so in my head about vocals and like, I gotta get this down. And, and it's funny. It's, it's funny. You know, we will go through and as singers, you know, we're singing this stuff every night, giving it our all. And I feel like, I feel like I could, I feel like I wish I could tour with the record and I know, you know, you really can't do it because people don't want to hear a song they don't know, but I wish I could tour and sing these songs and then go in and record them because I'm so much better at, yeah. at singing after I've played it for a while, sang it for a while. And I feel, I feel like I get that with live, you know, if I've recorded a, a song, I can sing it better live, uh, hands down. Yeah. That's a weird one. Cause you're right. It would be cool if you, work wood shop it on the road for a while you know like i think the band is playing the shit from the record better now mm -hmm. on the road but yeah that's always that chicken or the egg thing and there's for for me it's always like oh i wish we would have done this like added this little breakdown here i oh, will just do right. it live you need to do it live but that's just that's never going to change. I think that's just being an artist and and creating something and then realizing that can evolve and it can always evolve, and and we have a tendency to just keep pushing and keep keep moving things forward. That's it, man. And that's the whole concept, right? Yeah. If the record has a concept besides big titties on the front, it would be you know just keep pushing forward and keep making new shit and don't let anybody cancel you and throw you out you know and and don't turn your back on your old cool shit just because you're doing new cool shit you know yeah that's a good that's good advice too a lot of people um you see big artists will erase all of their instagram or whatever feed it may be a social media feed they'll erase all the old stuff and it'll just be just their new album or their new movie or something like that right. and i always thought like man there's just a lot of work that people can't enjoy now that they did or whatever like some video they might have been like oh i'm gonna watch that again and it's gone like <laughs> i mean i guess it's not really a big deal in the grand scheme of life but it's good advice to it, embrace your whole work you know everything you've done um even the things that i don't love that i've done um i try not to shit on it i try to treat myself with a little bit of like kid gloves as far as like hey i was young i i still don't know what's going on half the time you know so like i can only imagine when i was a kid that i i was had tunnel vision if i had an idea that's all i thought about i didn't think about this repercussion or this repercussion or whatever i was just like boom skateboarding boom punk rock whatever years before i met a producer that was worth a fuck and then it was just like wow you know like i want i want this you know like i want I want somebody to do that because yeah, it was hard. It was like you're in there, you're young, you don't know what you're doing, you, you got no money. You know, I go back and hear old records where I'm like, fuck, we had to do ten vocals in one day. You know, it's like ah, shit. Yeah. You know, and you're fried. You know, I mean, wait, don't... Hey, are you playing in Goldfinger now? Yeah, I play in. Go That's right. We saw each other in in California a little bit ago. Yeah, I play yeah, bass. It's looking like I, I, I didn't. I didn't realize that you were playing with those guys. So I saw you there and I just assumed MXPX was playing with, with, with them. But it, it looks like we're playing with you guys in April in, uh, in New York. Okay. Okay. I don't even know. What is it? It's like uh, a April 12th that Webster Hall we're supposed to be playing uh, Goldfinger and the Dora. So that'll be, that'll be fun. You know? Awesome. That's dude. A, I hope you guys, doing some more shows out there we'll do some more i hope so i i honestly this is the first i'm hearing about it i know mxpx has some shows we're actually playing webster theater as well in new york but that's in january or that's in february february 9th so we gotta do some tour of mxpx shows that would blow some minds that right? would blow some minds that would be awesome we'll do salt lake city i i heard you guys are finally going to salt lake city or did you already do that we we went there with bad <laughs> So that was fun. That's right. And we've been doing Salt Lake City live, which we never really did before, but we were like, fucking own it, you know? So we. Yes. We're, we're doing that one. We were in New Orleans. I we old song in New Orleans. Awesome. I gotta, I gotta get, get that on the practice schedule for. We're playing Salt Lake City uh, in April, I think. And um, 
We should do it. <laughs> we should do it. That'd be good. You're cutting out. You back? food in Salt Lake City. That's my only advice to you. Is what? Sorry, can you repeat that? Do not, do not get Mexican food. Uh, do not get Mexican food. Got you. It's yes. Bad idea. Salt Lake City. A, l- a lot of great, nice people, beautiful people in Salt Lake City, but maybe not the best Mexican They're place. Good Oh yeah, I think they something some weird chemical in the water. They all they're all blonde hair, blue eyed. Telling you, and there's a lot of Hawaiians out there too. What's that? I love to pollute that Aryan gene pool. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Uh, A a buddy of mine from junior high moved from here to basically somewhere in Utah, like near Salt Lake. He's been there ever since. And I, I'll, I'll just see like pictures of him on Facebook, but he's, he's Hawaiian. So, so there's like a little contingency of, of Brown people over there. He's got, he's, he's Mormon as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of those little Brown people. <laughs> they got a lot of kids. Uh, anyway, dude. So, um, uh, Salt Lake City's fun. I, I love the song. I love so. There's so many dwarf songs that are just class. They have classic lyrics to them that stick out to me. And Salt Lake City is definitely one of those. And and you know. It, yeah. Did I, did I tell you the story of, of that song? Um, I, was, I probably did when on the last podcast we did. Let's t- it, tell it again. I was I was in an airport, and this old lady walked up to me, and she was kind of confused, and she said, "Are, are you?" Salt Lake City, and, and I said no. And then I sat down in the plane, and I was like, "Shit, that's a song, you know." Yep. I'm not going to Salt Lake. City. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, you told that. That's great. Yeah, and it's perfect. You got to give her some writer writers inspiration credit. Um. All right. Well, I guess. I mean, we could talk more about punk rock if you want to talk about. You know, things have changed. We already kind of talked about the I internet. Do the rest of this boys getting a little fucked up. I, Let's I talk again. Let's do one of these when we do that show. I hear you. I hear you. Let's do. If we do the show, let's do one in person. We can just sit down and do it. Absolutely, I look forward to it, Mike. Thanks for talking to me. All right, thanks for being on Concept Album by the Dwarves. Everybody, go check it out. Streaming everywhere, and where can they get it? Um, what's your web- website again? Thedwarves.com is the best place to get it signed, and you know, uh, it makes me richer. All right, go to dwar- thedwarves.com. Get it there. That's the best place to get it. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Black. Appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. See you around. Safe travels to y'all. All right. Thanks to my guest, Blag Dahlia from The Dwarves. Their album uh, is out right now. It's called The Concept Album. I recommend it. It's really, really good. Really well done. Sounds great. The songs are great. If you like The Dwarves, you're going to love it. Um, Ralph Champagne's got some vibes in there, too. Um and you can check them out on tour. Um, if they're not on tour at this exact second, they'll be on tour again, like uh, like we talk about. But um all right, you guys. Thank you so much. MXPeaks.com. Uh, we got merch. We got holiday stuff. We probably can still get you Christmas deliveries before Christmas. If you want gifts, go to MXPeaks.com. We have Christmas mugs and things like that. We have uh, a bunch of uh, hoodies and, and T-shirts. And I think the skateboards are almost gone. There might be one design left. Um, the... Nova variant is sold out, but we have other variants available of the new album, Find a Way Home. Um, and if you want to call in, call in, leave a message, 360-830-6660. Leave me a message. Let me know what you want me to talk about. If you have a question, a comment, whatever it is, be my guest. Um, and then last but not least, shout out to Bob McKnight. Thanks for producing. Thanks for doing this thing. And if you want to be featured on the podcast your band we do music mondays every now and again you can go to the my career podcast facebook group and you post a youtube link of your band right there and give me a little blurb and i'll I'll do every now and again usually about once a month or so um it's not clockwork or anything but i'll do a music monday episode all right thanks everybody once again thanks to blag 
Always love talking to you, my man. All right. Peace. Peace.